The 10-year yield hitting a session high of 4.77 earlier today, off that level right now. The two-year still above 5%, the 30 up at 488. Kevin Nicholson is a portfolio manager at Riverfront Investment Group. Kevin, uh, how focused are you on, on uh, what's been happening in rates? I'm very focused on what is happening in rates because I think that rates drive the world right now. And, you know, earlier this week, we saw the 10-year Treasury uh, cross over 4.8%. And I think that uh, that's an important uh, gauge because ultimately, I think that the long end of the curve is going to anchor itself right around 5% uh, as many investors start to try to uh, lock in these higher rates Um um, that are uh, we are experiencing um, because when you think about most uh, folks that are uh, thinking about taking off, uh, taking out uh, withdrawals every year, they're thinking about you know four percent is what you know most financial planners have uh, put in place, and right. now you're talking about getting a uh, risk-free rate that's uh, you know closer to five percent. No, I, we were kind of joking about this before. Like, can ever? Why do you need a four hundred one k if you can just buy a thirty year treasury at five percent? But the problem is that that doesn't keep up with inflation, right? That that five percent is, uh, you know, that's that's nominal dollars, and it's not going to grow with the with the stock market or anything like that. So, but yes, it's totally crowding out people from other investments, and and this is the kind of liquidity hole argument that Bridgewater and others have made that until there's some other major buyer of treasuries or the yield stop rising, it's hard not to draw capital out of other assets. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I think that is going to be the big paradigm switch here with uh, interest rates rising higher is that I think that you're going to see Fewer, uh, fewer people allocating to equities because when you think about where the equity market is right now, um, you know the S and P 500, the dividend yield on the S and P is right at 1.62 percent, and the equity risk premium, when you think about where it was uh, a year ago, it was 212 basis points. Today, that sits at about 35 basis points. So it's making it more and more difficult to allocate to equities when yields are getting this high. And so that's why I think that it's important to start uh, considering fixed income and thinking about uh, that investment going forward. So you say we believe the Fed will raise once more and then leave rates unchanged through the third quarter, through the third quarter of 2024. So that tells me that you think we're near the end of this cyclical r rise in interest rates. That would yes. suggest to me that this is a very, we're getting close to a very, to a very good time to buy and own bonds, either if you want to buy those bonds and hold them to maturity, because the rates aren't likely to go much higher from where they are today, or if you want to buy those bonds and then sell them when rates start to come down and the bond value goes up. Uh, you're absolutely right, um, Tyler. I th We believe that we are getting close to the end here. Uh, we have had a huge repricing in the fixed income markets over the last uh, two years. Uh, you, you know, a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago, we had a 10-year Treasury that was at 1.5%. Today, we're sitting at 4.71%. So um, we think that a lot of the damage has been done. And now that yields are higher, that break even, um, you know, that yield per unit of duration has gone up immensely in the fixed income market. So it's, it's giving you an opportunity that now with the coupons being so much higher that you're not going to get as, you know, these moves up in rates aren't going mm -hmm. to hurt nearly well, to the same degree as they once let did. Let me squeeze in because. one more quick question and get one more quick answer. There is the okay. rate the Fed can control, which is the Fed, basically the Fed funds rate at, at whatever it is. And if they stop, that's one thing. But the rest of the market is not controlled. It may be influenced by the Fed, but it is, no, is not controlled by the Fed. It is controlled by private buyers, which can include the Fed, uh, but, but generally not. Do you see... If the Fed is done, could the rest of the market nevertheless continue to rise in interest rates because of the fundamentals or the mechanics of that market? In other words, that the issuance is so high and that the buyers are becoming fewer. There's always that possibility. There are, you know, you have 
But there are certain segments of the market that need to buy longer assets because they need to mm -hmm. match their uh, assets and liabilities off, you know, such as insurance companies and such. So I think that there's going to be a segment of the market that is going to want to buy bonds at the long end of the curve. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are others that are, you know, don't want to catch a falling knife. And so they're trying to wait. But again, I will reiterate, I believe that, you know, right around 5%, that's the sweet spot. And that's because you're now getting to the point of where an earnings yield is um, with stocks. So it's, you know, you're making that call of, you know, where is the value add? And I think that, you know, fixed income now is getting to the point where it is more of the value add than equities right. are. Because I feel that equities are yeah. going to be range bound at least through the end of the year um, because there hasn't been a catalyst. Okay. Kevin, thanks. Kevin at Riverfront Investment Group. Kevin Nicholson.